At this stage, what interests me most is the whole idea of what passes for correct or incorrect in American English. Even before America declared its independence from Britain here in Philadelphia, the two Englishes had been going their own ways. George Bernard Shaw once joked that the two nations were separated by the same language. Bill LeBoff is the director of the Atlas of North American English. What do you consider standard American? Well, most linguists recognize that there is a broadcast standard pronunciation which is not fixed, but which converges towards a pattern that is not local. And that's changed over time. It drew originally from where? From England. There was something called International English that was really modeled upon British received pronunciation. It took its form in London at the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, Americans were not all influenced by it. Only the big Tory cities, Boston, New York, Savannah, Charleston, Richmond. They adopted that R-less pronunciation whereby you say car, not car, and store, which it shifts to stall. And that's still a pattern in England today. For me, the model of that international English standard was always FDR. He was a New Yorker who had the prestige pattern of the upper class in New York, and it was really arless. It sounded like this. To those who would not admit the possibility of the approaching storm, the past two weeks have meant the shattering of many illusions. With this rude awakening has come fear, fear bordering on panic. I do not share these fears. So you notice that every time the letter R comes up, unless a vowel follows, it's going to sound like this. The approaching storm. Storm. Not storm, but storm, and... I do not share these fears. But he, it's more than just the R. Uh, you notice the way he says shattering and utter good faith. So uh, the pronunciation of TST in those situations, still found in Boston, uh, was again uh, modeled on the British pattern. And uh, it held right up to the end of World War II. And then, to our great astonishment, it flipped. So right after World War II, people growing up uh, in New York City and in many other cities behaved in just the opposite way. When they were careful, they pronounced their R's. And when they were not careful, just speaking casually, they stayed with their r dialect. So people wanted to sound more English before World War II and less so after World War II. We hear British people use that pattern and we love it. But it's not right for an American. LeBoff believes Philadelphia shaped American speech more than any other city because it was the only East Coast city 